I'm going to go ahead and all right, Kyle, um, go ahead and I will let you take over. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, as Eileen said, my name is Kyle Bora. I am an applications, associate applications developer with um, in ITSD um, with the Department of Higher Education and Workforce Development. Um, I am blind. Um, I have a little bit of vision left, but um, basically not not anything useful, especially not when it comes to um, reading anything with uh, on a computer screen. Um, so I use a combination of a screen reader, um, which is basically the main focus of today's topic. Um, and I also um, have a little bit of input and output um, from what's called the Braille display. It's right here. Um, I'm holding it up on the video. Hopefully, hopefully people can see that. I'm not sure how well my video is. Um, but basically, um, that's an elect it's electronic refreshable Braille display um, that gives me one line of 40 character output. Um, and it does have a keyboard on it, so I can type um, into it. But that's um, one way I access my computer. Um, and so I have had, um, I've been using um, similar technologies majority of my life, um, all the way, most of the way through my education. Um, so uh, I am very familiar familiar with everything I'm about to talk about um, and uh, use it every day. Um, so I'm glad to be able to come here and uh, for now, the last time, um, but who knows, I may have other talks in the future, but um, for now, I'll be able to talk with all of you about screen readers and accessibility and testing and learning about all that sort of stuff. Um, I don't have a PowerPoint um, for today, um, mostly because I want everyone to focus on the demo. Today is going to be a giant demo of NVIDIA, which is my screen reader of choice. Um, so uh, take notes. If you're a notes person, um, there are some resources that Eileen will make available after the fact. Um, and I'm going to try and leave uh, some time at the end for questions, any sort of Q&A, because I know people usually have a lot of questions about screen readers. And so I'm going to try and, if you have questions, um, uh, you can either ask them in the chat or save them to the end. Um, if Eileen gets a chance, she might interrupt me with a question, but um, there is a dedicated Q&A session at the end. Um, so without further ado, um, basically, if you don't know what a screen reader is, um, a, oh, and I do have some notes here on my own. Um, it is a page of Braille. Um, not that that necessarily matters, but I thought I'd point that out. Um, so what is a screen reader? A screen reader is a program on a computer. And uh, most computers nowadays, um, smartphones, tablets, computers, etc., all have some form of screen reader, which I'll mention in a second, um, that basically gives speech feedback um, of whatever is on screen um, to the person using it. Um, the, the basic form is speech feedback. Um, like I said, you, you can use a Braille display and it will output um, whatever it's speaking in Braille. It's just an alternative form um, of the output. But that's an ex basic usage is it takes text on screen um, and puts it into speech feedback uh, for people um, who can't see the screen. Um, it's unfortunately not a silver bullet. Everything is not accessible. Um, but a lot of stuff is, um, I'd say f far majority stuff is accessible than is not, especially when it comes to, um, websites, um, education, um, apps, um, job search, um, career focused stuff. Um, where it starts becoming less accessible is more multimedia games, entertainment and stuff. Um, which everyone is always working on, um, but definitely education, job force, um, web apps, websites, apps, all that is, is very, very accessible. 
Um, so as I mentioned, I use NVDA, which is a screen reader for Windows. NVDA stands for Non-Visual Desktop Access. And it's been around, f I should have looked this up, It's it's been about 15 years or so now um, that it's been around. Um, there is also JAWS, J-A-W-S, on the Windows side of things. That's been a screen reader, screen reader since the 90s. Um, and there is also a Narrator now on Windows. Um, it is not the Narrator of Windows XP or Windows 7. Um, if you've either accidentally enabled it or um, checked it out at one point back then, um, it is a... Pay, it is a that narrator was a pale comparison to what it is now. Um, narrator is a full-fledged screen reader now in Windows 10 and Windows 11. Um, I use it as sort of a backup um, if or when my NVDA crashes or fails me. Um, but it is an option, and I did want to mention that. Um, again, I don't use it as my main screen reader, but it is available. Um, and then obviously on macOS slash Apple devices, there is voiceover for iPhone, iPad, and Mac. Um, I use that more in my personal, um, life, uh, but for work, uh, I am obviously on Windows, um, and stuck with Windows for readers, which is what I'll be demoing today. Um, and there is also a TalkBack, um, on Android, Chrome OS, um, actually Chrome OS, I think is Chrome Vox, um, but there is Chrome OS screen reader and TalkBack on Android. So all of that is available. There are links, um, that, uh, like I said, Eileen will provide, um, to, uh, get you more information if you need specifics, either about voiceover, talkback, narrator, JAWS, etc. something else that I'm not talking about. Um, so now that I gave you all of that download of information, um, let me start screen sharing. Screen checked. Share screen. Okay, um, so this should be coming in, and you should hear my sound. So that said, desktop, and that is narrator. Or sorry, that is NVDA speaking. Um, because I use it every day, um, mine has been highly customized to my specific settings. Um, that voice is not the default anymore. Um, they have much more um, human, um, much more much more intelligible voices, and it will not be that fast. Um, so uh, first we're going to go, I'm going to show you where you can download NVIDIA if you don't have it downloaded already. It is at NV as in... N is in Nancy, V is in video, nvaccess.org. Um, and you go to the download link right here. And it um, pops up with a page. Um, you uh, do have to pick, um, because NVIDIA is free, they do take donations. You do have to pick um, some sort of donation. There is obviously a zero donation amount. Um, but once you click... Um, if you want to donate or not donate, um, you can download it. Um, you will always get the most recent version. Um, I'm not going to go ahead and download this because I've already downloaded it, um, but I was just showing you where to download it. Once you download it, um, you want to install it, um, obviously. Um, but one thing you may not know um, about NVIDIA is it you can install it as an actual program or you can install it as a portable copy. And basically what that means is instead of installing it as like in your programs, um, program files folder um, in Windows, if you're familiar with how programs are installed, it will install it into whatever folder you want it to. And it will keep all of the files, instead of a regular installed program may have files all over your, all over your file system, It'll install everything into a folder so that you can 
um, as it says in the name, it's a portable copy. You can put it on a thumb drive and plug some plug your thumb drive into a random computer, whichever you want to, run NVDA, and now you have NVDA and um, an accessible Windows environment on whatever computer you want. And where that becomes very handy is when you're running in portable mode, which I'll um, install here in a second, that does not require administrator rights. Um, I've noticed and I've heard from several people that when you're installing NVDA by default in a normal install mode, because it needs to put stuff in your program files directory and um, system files all over the place, it needs administrator rights. If your user is not administrator, if your logged in user is not an administrator, you need to authenticate with an administrator account. And especially in corporate environments, um, your typical office worker probably doesn't have administrative rights to their computer, which is good from a security standpoint, but frustrating when you need access to your computer. And I've definitely encountered that over the years. Um, at a, a previous job, I needed to update NVDA and uh, the IT, before I was in IT, um, the IT person I was talking with, he's like, uh, no, you can't install that. You need administrator rights. And I was like, but I need to update NVDA. There's updates. It's like, nope, you got you got um, rights for that version. So I ran a portable copy. Um, so let's install NVDA. Uh, the most recent version is NVDA. They go on a year, um, a year, yearly version number. So 2022.3.1, um, next year will be 2023. Yes, I want to run this file. Setup is loading. Um, so it's still using my previous voice, but this is the license agreement, and of course I have to agree to it if I want to continue. But you can install to this computer with the keyboard shortcut Alt-I. Um, that is the normal install. Or you could do create a portable copy, which is what we want to do. Um, so click that. Um, it wants the directory that we want to install it to. And so I'm just going to put it on my desktop. If I could figure out how to spell. So I'm going to install this on my desktop in this NVDA portable folder. Um, so this is asking if we want to start NVDA after um, installing it, and I want that, so yes. Um, there's the continue button. A couple seconds. Okay, here we go. Welcome to NVDA dialog. Welcome to NVDA. Most commands for controlling NVDA require you to hold down the NVDA key while pressing other keys. By default, the numpad insert and main insert keys may both be used as the NVDA key. You can also configure NVDA to use the caps lock as the NVDA key. Press NVDA plus N at any time to activate the NVDA menu. From this menu, you can configure NVDA, get help, and access other NVDA functions. Options grouping, keyboard layout. Okay, so that was just a little bit of an intro. Um, as you can tell, much um, better, um, more intelligible voice, much slower. Um, so as it said, um, there is a key, a key you can set up called the NVDA key. Um, that is basically like a modifier key, um, specifically for like if you might do Control A to select all and Control C to copy and control V to paste, there's um, a key you can designate as your NVDA key. And for doing stuff specifically with NVDA, getting to settings, opening the NVDA menu it talked about, um, doing stuff specifically for NVDA, you press that NVDA key with any other um, keyboard shortcuts um, that it needs. And by default, that is the insert key or the zero key without caps lock um, on a numpad. 
um, or th also the insert key is the top left right above the delete key on a normal six pack on a keyboard. Um, also, alternatively, you can enable the caps lock key as your um, NVIDIA key. Um, that puts it a little bit closer to the control shift alt buttons, um, which you will also be needing if you um, do any of these commands. Um, you do have to then, if you do have, if you are running NVDA for whatever reason, and um, uh, you need to use caps lock, you need to double press caps lock to get regular caps lock use out of it. Um, so we will, um, I'll show you that. Um, and right now we're looking at um, if we want to pick desktop layout or um, laptop layout of keyboard um, arrangements. Um, basically the key, the laptop layout is an alternative keyboard layout, um, mainly for if you're running a laptop without a number pad, um, in the long run for basic NVIDIA use, this doesn't really matter. So I would personally just keep it on the default desktop, um, layout, which, um, people will probably assume you're using defaults. Use caps lock as an NVDA modifier key checkbox, not checked alt plus U. Um, so as that said, we want to use caps lock as our NVDA modifier. Space checked. And I'm tabbing between these different, um, Eric Dibner. Eric, tabbing between these different Eric controls Dib and um, selecting them a space. Show this dialog when NVDA starts checkbox checked alt plus S. You can have this, this, you can have this dialog pop up every time you, Eric Dibner had, era, every time you start NVDA, which we do not want. Space. So uncheck that. OK button. And there's the OK button. So we're going to go. NVD. Um, one strong suit for NVDA, like I said, it's free. It's open source. It also has a bunch of add-ons that you can install. If you're just testing normally, you probably don't need add-ons. I just wanted to say it for completion um, sake. And I will. am actually going to install an add-on right now Desk. Um, because Zoom is jabbering at me. There's a Zoom enhancements add-on that basically shuts those messages up from zoom while i'm presenting so it doesn't interrupt our demo here z zoom enhancements 1.1.2.nv to add in 20. that's an nvidia add-on file it's just a zip file but i can install it very easily add on install i'm gonna click yes to install this add-on i'm gonna click yes because i need to restart nvda nvda use um, and it restarted the NVDA very quickly. Um, and uh, by default, uh, you can um, let the NV Access um, project know about uh, usage, usage statistics of NVDA. Um, it's all anonymized. Um, they're not scraping your personal data. I would click yes, um, just because that gives them more feedback about the different environments, the different add-ons, the different way NVDA is used, and you're helping them get information about um, NVIDIA to make it better for everyone, not only testers, but um, users like myself. This meeting is being... Okay, so Desktop. now that we have uh, everything installed, um, there are a couple settings um, that we want to configure. Um, like I said, you can press NVIDIA N to get into the NVIDIA menu. NVIDIA menu. And we want to go to Preferences. Preferences sub settings and then settings. S. NVD. And uh, under this, there are several options. General pro save can show exit. Uh, show exit options when exiting NVDA checkbox checked alt plus. First one is I would uncheck um, every time NVDA exits. It will ask you what do you want to do. There's a couple options in there. Space. Um, to turn off NVDA is the NVDA key and Q. Um, uh, ninety percent of the time you're just shutting it down. So I check that. Play sound logging level automatic notify for, automatically check for updates to note. Um, you do want to check for updates automatically. Um, especially um, okay. Notify for pending up. Uh, allow the NVDA per OK button. And like I said, there's a couple other options you can che you can check in there cancel button apply button up category general pro yeah. save configure nvda language show exit options play sounds when mm. category okay. speech to a um so there is a speech option you can adjust the voice 
Um, there are a couple Microsoft voices that are very clear um, and much uh, very human sounding. There are uh, the original one I was using is called eSpeak. That is very, not very intelligible, but is very um, good at fast rates, which is where I have it set. Um, but if you're just a tester and are experimenting with NVDA, pick one of the Microsoft one core voices. Braille three of four. Um, there's Braille options. We're not going to use that. Vision four of four. Um, vision, very vision. important to some people. Um, so you want to check this box for enable visual highlight. Space check. Which checks um, a couple of these other boxes and makes them enabled. Highlight system focus check box checked alt plus C. System focus, that's the main focus. Like I, you can see I'm tabbing around um, between these different elements. That's its main system focus. Highlight navigator object check box checked alt plus O. Highlight navigator object. Um, that is a different interaction mode um, called object navigation. Um, it's That's a little bit more of an advanced feature and you probably won't need that as a tester unless you're specifically testing apps. Um, if you make an app and you're testing it, um, that may be helpful in some situations, but usually just for a tester, um, especially a website tester, which is what most people are doing nowadays, you probably won't need that, but that is still available if you need to use that. Highlight browse mode cursor checkbox checked alt plus M. And browse mode cursor, that's the cursor on the website we're going to be looking at here in a second. Do you want to have that highlighted? Screen curtain grouping. Make screen black. Immediate effect. Checkbox not checked. There is screen curtain. Um, once you become very custom to using a custom, uh, very comfortable with using NVDA, you can uh, enable what's called screen curtain. And that, as it said, it blacks out the screen. So basically, you would be using it in uh, the same situation um, any other blind person is that can't see the screen. So that's sort of a. Uh, I'm. I really want to try this out and see how this really works. I'm not going to um, uh, rely on my eyes um, th that I might uh, cheat or look at something. Um, that is very much not <laughs> – you don't have to do this. This is a very like uh, I'm going to try and adopt this and, and um, go sort of hardcore mode on this. You definitely don't have to do that. Um, but that is an is an option if you want to avail yourself of it. Always show. Um, and so there's a couple settings Play. with um, screen curtain that you might want to um, enable, especially the warning. It's like, hey, you're about to turn off your screen. Are you really sure you want to do this? Okay, but uh, so there is that apply button. Up. Keyboard property page. Um, so there's there is keyboard. Um, like I said, we already configured some of this stuff. Um, Select. Speak typed character. Speak type. Speak typed characters. Check box. Checked all. One thing you might want to come in here is uh, uh, um, uncheck typed characters. Um, and NVDA will say uh, the different um, keys you press. If you find that feedback annoying or not necessary, Space. you can uncheck that. Check. We're gonna uncheck that for now. Speak typed words. Check box. Not checked all. Plus um, and w. there's also typed words. Um, there's also keyboard shortcut. Um, feedback in here as well speech interrupt for typed characters check speech interrupt allow skim reading in beep if typing speak command keys play sound uh, for handle keys from ok button i think that's all we want Can in here apply button up category mouse 6 of 14 review cursor set um there is a mouse settings in here um i would you can use a mouse with nvda 90 percent of the time a mouse is not necessary um, if you're trying to use a screen reader with a mouse, you're doing it wrong. Um, the point is to control it with a keyboard, um, and uh, that's the way you should be testing. Review cursor, set input comp. Um, there's some rev other more advanced settings Object. that don't matter in here. Browse mode. Browse, browse mode property. Number of maximum. No use screen layout. Enable browse mode on page load checkbox. Checked alt plus e. Automatic say all on page. Uh, when a page loads in NVDA, it will start automatically reading the whole page from the top of the screen. If you find that annoying um, or want to turn it off. Space. Not check. You can uncheck that from browse mode in here. Include automatic focus. Automatic focus mode for carrot movement check. Um, you want to keep all this automatic focus mode on. I'll talk about focus mode in a second. Audio indicate trap all not automatic. Uh, okay, cancel apply button categories. Document for Windows OCR 12. Uh, advanced, zoom in. 
Okay. Apply. Cancelled. Okay, but this meeting is being... That's all the settings we need to look at. Um, we want to go back in the NVDA menu as well. NVD and under Tools... View Log V. Speech Viewer. There is a thing called Speech Viewer. NVDA Speech Viewer. Which brings up a window of everything NVDA says. Um, so let me demonstrate this. Desktop list. Zoom enhancements 1.1.2. And SQL D WebX 7 Word 2000. Just arrowing on my desktop, and I'm hoping. NVDA speech. This meeting is NVD yeah. NVDA. All that got recorded. It should have been in the speech viewer, um, which is a very helpful thing if you're not necessarily 100% sure of what NVDA said, or if you need to copy it somewhere and put it in a ticket. Um, use that to get. Um, NVDA's uh, what it's speaking. I'm going to turn this off for now because I don't want it covering up um, other stuff in the window. Um, uh, when you're using a screen reader, screen reader is very a one item at the time focused. There's not multiple windows on. I don't. I can't deal with multiple windows at the same time because I only have one focus of NVDA. Um, so I don't want it covering up and getting in the way. But if you are able to manage windows and you need that to view what NVDA is speaking, um, that is a very nice option to have. NVD view log. This meeting is. So I'm gonna turn that off. NV access download. NV NV. Um. So oh, and uh, the NV uh, help menu in this NVDA menu under H. User. There is a lot of stuff. The user guide you can read through. Commands quick. Commands quick reference. That's just an easy um, big list of all the keyboard commands for both laptop and. Um, uh, desktop layouts for, as a good reference. What's new and um, there's what's new if you're looking at updating. NVDA website um, W. Obviously the NVDA website is here you can access. License I. Contributors uh, O. Welcome dialogue. Check for update about. And there's about and if you need information about the type of the version of NVDA stuff like that. User guide you. Um, but that's the help menu is there. Help. Very useful stuff. NV. Um, and so now that we have everything configured. 228. We are going to uh, briefly look at this website. Accessible. Um, and basically what this page is, is an accessible um, document um, for, it has some univer fake university information on here, information about classes and a table. You can put your um, personal information in this little form field they created. Um, but this is a very accessible website. And I'm going to show you how I will would go through it as a screen reader user um so that th that can help Lori Libert um that can help anyone uh looking to test websites of what i'm looking for as a blind person um obviously you also want to run your website through any accessibility testers um but one um and accessibility checkers but once you do that and it looks good um make you want to make sure double check everything is accessible actually running it with a screen reader so when i come to this page basically what mvd gets put into right now is called browse mode i'm able to browse this page um and it i interact with all the different elements of the page um the first thing i do is when i am in browse mode NVIDIA offers me um, keyboard shortcuts to move on this page by different types of elements. So if I hit H, I'm going to start moving by headings. And it's not speaking. This meeting is accessible. Options menu button. Show all but close button. Accessible unit heading level. There we go. Head heading level. So uh, we're already at a heading at the top, but if I hit H again. Main landmark featured story slideshow heading level two. There's a featured stories under a header. Welcome. Heading level two. So welcome heading. Bienvenido. Um, heading level there's two. There's some Spanish language, I assume that is. Sorry, my sp Spanish is a little, rust <laughs> little rusty from high school. <laughs> Can you spot the barriers? Heading level two. Some more headings about information. I think this is the section about um, how they made it more accessible. 
um, because there is an inaccessible version of this website. Oh, enrollment trends heading level two. There's that table of enrollment trends I talked about. Um, form apply now. There's that form where heading you can put level the information. Two. And I'm finding all this just by moving by headings. Um, alternatively, I'm going back to the top. You can move by what's called landmarks. And that's um, a little bit less granular than those headings. But that, that gives you a good um, understanding of the different layouts of the website. And you can jump to stuff very quickly. Because if... Um, and what landmarks are is like this top heading where there's like a banner on top of the page. A banner is a landmark. Main banner landmark accessible university graphic banner, heading level. Yeah, banner landmark. That's the top banner of the page. Navigation menus are in landmarks. Search menus are in landmarks. The main um, areas, that's actually what it's called, main of a website where all the content is is a landmark. The footer at the bottom of the page is a landmark. But if I'm down this page, well, if I move down by some headings, okay. Oh. Uh, okay, this is fine, but what if I want to go to a different section of the page? I can um, go backwards by using Shift and any of these modifiers. So if I move Shift, press Shift and D, I'm going back up to the uh, navigation landmark because I might want to pick another page. Main menu navigation landmark show menu keyboard shortcuts button collapsed. So, and um, that's another good feedback too of all this um, navigation menu. It has a bunch of sub menus. Well, you have to you have to code it properly to tell the screen reader that all, there's a bunch of sub menus. Menu bar, menu items, menu item, sub menu. Act. Um, and so that's nice and accessible. Um, and it said button on this menu bar too. Um, if I'm looking for a specific button, like a search button or a or a confirm button or something, I'd move. I'd press B to do the, to do that in the button. Main landmark previous slide graphic button. Well, now it jumped down into that um, uh, news section, and it's going to put me through some Next, of those buttons. List with. Um, but yeah, button button you can access by B. Um, at, to move to some of those form elements down um, at the bottom of the page, um, F will take you through all the just like generic form elements. There's multiple different types, um, but E will take you to an edit field. So there should be an edit field where you can put your name in towards the bottom. Form name yeah. required. Form edit name required. First edit field. Email, Email. required. Um, and let's just say I, fi I filled it all this, let's just say I filled this form out and I can hit B. Um, there should be a submit button at the bottom. Submit button. Yeah, there's a submit button. Um, I mentioned that there's a table on this page of enrollment information. Main landmark O enrollment trends table with five. I can hit T and it will jump me to this table. Um, and tables are kind of tricky. Once you find a table, um, you can use the up and down arrows. But what that does. 2007, the year rows. Caption row one call. Is it will move across the row and then down to, or yeah, 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 across the row. And then once it hits the end of the row, it'll go to the next next row down and go all the way across that row that's not necessarily the best way to read a table um the bet the way you read tables is by pressing the control alt and the arrow keys um to move around so if i press control alt and the right arrow key i'll move along this row cs column two through seven two thousand and seven zero cs column eight through three and I moved over a column or two. And now if I want to read down this column, I press um, Control, Alt, and Down Arrow. Row 2, 2809, column 8, CS. Total row 382. Percent mail row 487. And it's reading not only the location that I'm at in the table, but it's also reading the column and row headers, which is very nice. If you construct your table properly, it will read all that. 234P. Um, and um, I mentioned uh, focus mode. Focus mode um, is available to you on a website like this. When you come across a um, uh, edit field, like I mentioned before, that name edit field. So if I press tab, um, which skips over a lot of stuff, but tab should bring me to that form field. Apply now. Um, well, it didn't take me to where I wanted it to, but it took me to something. Email. Um, name oh there we go required. yeah it did um so you heard that you heard that beep and sort of uh noise main apply now that automatically went into forms mode because i came across um an edit field where i can type basically forms mode is for inputting inputting information into a form 
hence or sorry not forms mode focus mode forms mode is what they call it in jaws forms mode focus mode it's the same thing um but i can type in this field r o b so i put in my name kyle bora email email invalid Please fill out Kyle.bora at OA dot um mo dot gov. Clayton Guffey, two plus two e submit button. Um and they two plus two, two. is four. <laughs> Type two. Um so that's the way to um input into a form. If you want to you can hit escape to get out of it for whatever reason, if you need to get out of it. And um, now all the other keyboard shortcuts are available to you B to move by buttons. Um, but when you're, in, when you're in focus mode and you want to type into a field, um, that's what you want to do. Desired mate. Um, Psychology. So there, and there's a bunch of check boxes and radio buttons here. You can move, once you go to them, you can move up and down. Check box, not check. Um, with them uh, and select them with the space bar. Um, but all, all these form elements are accessible. Um, and I want to contrast this with, um, I had all that rich navigation controls. Um, if I go back up to the top Out of and, um, sometimes I've seen, um, testers just tab, tab through a site, which is fine. Um, and there is something to be said for that should be accessible because that's a little bit more of how you would interact with a site if you're. Um, not using a screen reader, but you're still keyboard dependent. Like you may not be able to control a mouse, but you still can use a keyboard. Um, that is a little bit more simplified interaction than a website or with a website than a screen reader has. Um, so that is a, that is something to um, do take note. But a screen reader has a much more rich interaction and rich control over a website um, than just tab. Um, Main menu and um arrowing up and down the page now it does they those do have their purpose and a lot of times when i'm just reading a website like it's an article i may either have envy they just start reading the whole thing just start at the top of article and read or i might arrow down um multiple lines if i'm if i'm wanting more precise um reading control um so there so there is <clears throat> there is multiple ways to control a website um and get the information you want from it uh, when you're looking at um, looking at a website from a screen reader. And so I'm just showing you all these different controls. Um, but what I want to say about testing is it's somewhat, I'm showing you this website and how I control a screen reader, but it's a little bit dependent on you somewhat to understand what you're testing. Because if, let's just say this uh, table wasn't accessible. Main landmark Owen. Um, and it wasn't reading the column headers or some part of the table wasn't accessible. Well, you have to know how to con how to get to the table and navigate through this table to be able to control it. Um, a lot of a lot of things um, on the web that are skipped a lot are labels for these form controls. Apply. So this name field may not have the name label associated with it. So if I'm tabbing or moving along to this form field, it wouldn't say that I need to input my name email, or it wouldn't say that I need to input my email here. Um, a lot of those form labels need to be bound to those form controls. That's something you need to look for. Um, but it's a lot of testing is making sure something hopefully is made accessible and you can make it ex and um, checking that it is accessible. Um, so I think that is somebody oh one thing i do want to say this this website doesn't really um address it two -thir um but uh when you're talking about um screen readers on the website there is um a tool called aria a r i a which stands for accessible rich internet applications um, and it's basically a way to not only make websites accessible, um, or make inaccessible websites accessible, um, but it's also a way to give feedback to, um, and there's a mechanism through ARIA to give feedback to a screen reader. Um, and particularly where this is valuable is in 
um, more web app situations. I'm thinking Google Docs, YouTube, um, uh, stuff like that that is that is rich internet applications, hence the name. Um, where you might need more feedback to the screen reader than is necessary, or than you might need for just some random uh, information table or uh, a little form you want to fill out. Um, did your app, did your application save properly to the database? Any messages you pop up on the screen, you want to, you might want to think about adding um, ARIA support to that, so that the um, screen reader user doesn't have to go find the one line on your page with a hundred plus lines of text that said um, your application saved correctly um, or there was an error heaven forbid they filled out the application wrong and they got to fill out a bunch more fields correctly um, that's that's where aria really shines you want to be careful with it though because you don't want to give too much feedback as you saw um, obviously NVIDIA can be very chatty. I tried to shut it up a lot with control so that it wasn't too chatty. Um, but it can be very chatty. And if you're adding a whole bunch of, um, ARIA messages that spam directly to the screen reader, that could impact it actually trying to read the stuff the user wants to read, not your random messages that you think are important. <laughs> so you want to be careful with that. You don't want to overload the user with a bunch of messages, but you also want to be um, uh, helpful of like, yeah, your application is saved. Thank you for your submission. Um, oh, there was an error. Um, the There's markers at each field to tell you how you miss them. Um, oh, you're, uh, I know in Google Docs, this does it a lot. Oh, it, someone is editing this document as well. You're collaborating. The document's been saved. Um, uh, Gmail's really good about, um, dynamic notifications when you're doing stuff in Gmail, just stuff like that stuff that isn't, um, too intrusive, but it's good, helpful feedback that you wouldn't normally no, because as I said before, screen readers are very a one focused thing. If oh. I'm focused on this page, main line somewhere deep in this table, not, not in it, not to, to edge of um two per two thousand. I have no idea what else is on this page. I can't quickly scan up and look at some other part of this page. I I'd have to go out of this table, lose my spot, and I don't know. Let's just go back down to this form element or something like that. Now I've lost my spot in that table. I, I can't easily glance up at that table or glance down at those form elements and see um, what I'm what I'm trying to I can't I can't do that at the same time. Um, which is unfortunate. I think screeners need to f solve this somehow. I don't really know how we're going to solve it. But if whoever can solve that is going to be a very rich person if they can patent it or something like that. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that'd be very helpful for screen readers. But the screen readers are very one focused thing. And where possible, if you can give feedback to the screen reader user of something happening, as long as it's not too intrusive, that's uh, very helpful. Um, so yeah, like I said, just um, be aware of what you're testing. Um, like I said, use those help documents. Um, use any resources in your network um, of other people you may know that have may maybe have more um, uh, screen reader experience than you do um, and you want to get feedback from users if you're able to um, like get some user experience feedback from users that might be using assistive technology screeners magnifiers etc um, ask them how how they like your website app or whatever. Um, do you have any feedback? Can we make it more accessible? Open yourself up to um, if post on your page, if there's accessibility issues you experience with this app, contact us and give them a way to contact you. In my experience, if a disabled person comes across some inaccessible part of a website, they will let you know. They want to be able to access the information um, uh, of your website just as just like any other sighted person um will and they have the right to that um so i think that's mostly it 245 i'm gonna leave about 15 minutes or so um for some q a 
Um, and I con um, Eileen will definitely give my contact information out um, for anyone to um, ask questions later if something occurs to them email me um, more than willing to talk about this Love Corey button has left talking about accessibility and um, everything that goes with it I don't know why the add-on didn't work <laughs> it should have worked um, it's still jabbering at me of all the messages in zoom um, but uh, yeah if anyone has any questions I'm Melinda definitely Dallas. open this meeting controls meeting. Let me see about stopping the screen share. Hi, Kyle. Um, I don't know if I can ask right now, but I um, I came with a question. Yes. That I'm hoping. I actually think it might have been answered when you were showing us the um, the preferences. So. I use um, NVDA to, to check all of, you know, PowerPoints or anything that I'm creating. I know you didn't really touch too much on like Microsoft stuff, but one of the issues that I have when I'm testing is that, and again, I think you answered it, but I just wanted to check. Um, when I'm going through each slide, it automatically reads everything, including the header like twice. So it sounds really awkward. Um, and I don't know if that's just an automatic thing or if I turn off the automatic reading through everything, it'll take care of it, but it just doesn't sound like it would be good for, you know, somebody using a screen reader is, uh, do you have any advice for that? Um, I don't know if that browse all automatic, um, browse mode takes care of that. Um, uh... like for example, like let's say the heading or the, the title of the screen said title, and then the body was like, you know, this is the body of the paragraph. It would go yeah. title, title, this, you know, so it repeats it twice. Um, are you, hmm, I'm not sure about that. I, I know I it's, it's probably a random one, but. Yeah, I, I personally haven't seen that. Um, if the first thing I would definitely say is probably update, make sure your NVIDIA is updated because they're constantly I coming out with bug fixes and that may have been something they fixed. Okay. I hope um, it's a bug because like I said, I'm trying <laughs> to do the best I can, but sometimes I'm like, I'm doing something wrong and I yeah. don't want to fix it. Yeah. Um, it, and it could be, it could be PowerPoint. It could be NVDA. It, it, there's with screen readers comes complexity, unfortunately, and the interaction of a screen reader with an application, even if, even if you're making the content accessible to accessible standards, you still could have issues because the, and this is this is not normally the case, but there still could have, could be issues sometimes with the app itself rendering something wrong or the screen reader interpreting something wrong, processing it wrong, and so unfortunately that can be a, can be an issue from time to time. I would say definitely the exception to the rule, but um, updating, making sure everything is updated, um, and seeing uh, where you can go from there. Um, to be honest, a lot of times, even if it does read the slide automatically by default, I just shut it up. I had to hit control <laughs> and start arrowing around and inter interacting with the slide myself. Um, so. Okay. Yeah, I'll yeah. definitely try that because like I said, you know, I want to do the best I can and I'm just, yeah. you know, constantly like pulling my hair out. So thank you so much. Yeah, yeah no problem. I'm not looking at the chat, but are there I hope this any is questions I mean, in the um, chat? Yeah, Greg, Greg, Mark has a couple questions for you. Greg, if you want to unmute yourself, you can go ahead and ask him out loud. Trying to stop screen share. I can't figure out how to stop. Well, Greg might share. be having some. Greg might be having some challenges unmuting. Um, so, Greg, if you'd like, you can also type them in the chat, and I'd be happy to read them for you. And while we're waiting, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording, but um, the session is still going to be open. So hold on one second. We'll do that. <laughs> 